This episode is brought to you by Full Bucket Veterinary Strength Supplements, the leader in digestive health for dogs, cats, and horses. Welcome to Chats with the Chatfields. This is a podcast to expand your idea of what impacts veterinarians, pet owners, and basically all animal lovers in the galaxy as humans. And we are your hosts. I'm Dr. Jen the Vet. And I'm Dr. Jason. If you have not yet subscribed to our show, why not? Just go to chatfieldshow.com and subscribe today. If you want to reach us and you've got a message full of love and positivity, you can find me at jen at chatfieldshow.com. And for all of you other folks who just want to keep it real, you can reach me at jason at chatfieldshow.com. Okay, welcome into the chat room, everyone. Uh, we, we have a great topic today. I'm not sure. I'm not sure quite how the convo is going to go. Um but we're going to be ta- we're going to be talking all about dog parks. Jason, have you been to a dog park? I have. I have been to a dog park. I know you're shocked, uh, you- but I have been to several dog parks. Did you take a dog? I know. Uh-uh. I, <laughs> <laughs> I went with somebody else with their dog. It was were, interesting. Were you lurking? I don't no, know. <laughs> no, no, no. I just didn't. I just didn't. Uh, you know, I ha- I've had a couple of dogs, right? And they were great. They just weren't always nice to other dogs. And I didn't think that was a great situation. So I'm sure we'll get into that later. We but will. yes, I've been to, I-, I would say, several different variations of the aforementioned dog park. Okay, well, hold that thought. We're going to get into the convo here. So we have um, a super awesome guest. So my friend and our colleague, um, and she's a smarty pants, Jason, I really like, I hope you have, um, as she says, the Googler. Up. I, I'm ready. I'm ready to I roll mean, whenever she uses those nine <laughs> syllable words. I got to figure I know, out what she's talking she's about. She's so smart. So we have my friend and um, board certified veterinary internist, Dr. Don Martin joining us. Hey, Dr. Martin. Good. Hello. Thank you for having me. I do have the Googler just in case. <laughs> She, you don't need the Googler. He doesn't That's why need we bring the Googler. You I need the Googler. That's oh, for sure. And she's got the glasses to make her look smarter. Oh, that was very good. <laughs> he doesn't need that. Wait, just wait till she starts talking, folks, because she doesn't need anything to make her look or sound smarter. She just is. Okay. She just Thank is. Thank so, you very much. Yes. Uh, okay. So we're going to talk about dog parks, Avi, because that's what I was asking Jason about. And... <laughs> First of all, let's just like lay out on the table. Let's just lay out what each of us really thinks of the concept of, and we'll, I guess we'll, we'll look, shall we lump in doggy daycare also? No. Or play like, (laughs) no, we shouldn't. No. No. Mm -mm. Okay. Dog parks only. Only dog parks. Okay. I'm not, I'm setting the rules down. We can't have too much stuff lumped in because then it starts to be if then whatever, whatever. It's just very, I don't, it's understand un- unrestrictive. really what's happening today that dr jason is setting the rules do you get that dr he's, martin he's the police that's right he's, a, he's the police. the role police here i thought we were talking about dog parks being different than doggy daycare i might have nothing yeah. of so she what saying. she's saying in a nice way uh, as they want to do from the north is i'm with jason i'm on <laughs> team dr jason you're very wrong, but she won't, she won't, she won't replay it. That's exactly what you said. <laughs> it is Roll true. It's true. Roll, Roll the tape. Roll That's the tape. right. That's right. Uh, for everyone not following the inside joke before we came on, we were discussing the fact that people should stop lying in general uh, because <laughs> someone has it on their cell phone video. Right. No kidding. Uh, yeah. So, um, all right. So, so we're just going to focus on dog parks. Okay. Um, thanks Dr. Jason for the boundary setting. And so, uh, what do you like, Dr. Martin? What do you think about dog parks in general? Like the concept of dog parks? Uh, that's a good question. So, I would, I guess, I think of dog parks as being a place where you can go to have doggy exercise. The bad thing, there's bad and good about everything. Yeah. Um, so, my, and that's okay, I'm gonna step out for a second, Dr. Jason, from your rules. Where doggy daycare, there's a little bit of rule associated with it. And then there's a little bit of structure and there's an ability for somebody, an entity to say, you can, you can, to control the population, to control the cleanliness. There's a grown up. To control the, 
and then to control the dogs. That, so the population that comes in, are you vaccinated or not? The cleanliness, how often they're cleaned. So therefore the infectious disease risks are very different in a dog park versus a doggy daycare. So okay. that's how I look at it. So doggy daycare and dog parks have both the same set of positives for social interaction, but yeah. you have a lot less structure to a doggy, doggy park. So you have to be an advocate for your dog's safety. All right, Dr. I have to I have to interject and, and have one more rule. Okay, every time okay. you say every time you say the word positive, you have to say positive because we're talking about dog. It's just a rule on in the chat room. I'm sorry, we didn't. Okay. All right, I, carry I on. Hear you. All right, good. Carry on. Positive. 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 All right. Okay. I don't know who this guy is that's on with us today, Don. This is like, like hey, hey, I'm trying. I'm, I'm I'm trying to show off for the new bear. That's pretty much. It. <laughs> I know he does have a the new old bear kind of feelings. He does like he opinions. Does. I'm feeling right. judged over my shoulder here. He's that's like, right. what? what are you talking about? Right. That's yeah, right. He's looking at you. He's I know. Honest. He's, he's watching. He's you. watching. Uh, okay. So, yeah. So I, and you know, what's interesting is that dog parks and this incredible craving and need for almost constant socialization and social interaction for our dogs is relatively new in my estimation. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, I think it's been only been going on for like 10 years, maybe. Oh, okay. Maybe 15 yeah. Mm -hmm. What what does that mean? Agree. What do you mean going on? They've never had, they didn't have dog parks in the eighties. Is that what you're saying? Like like I'm not saying you're wrong, but you're saying it's yeah, it, like it wasn't right? it wasn't really a thing. I don't. Well, think. I, I I think the argument could be made that 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 uh, pets in general, especially dogs, were were treated a little bit differently uh, then, right? They were treated not mm -hmm. as much as fame. I don't know. I'm just That's saying. True. Uh, I would say it's it's also because of the Googler we can see more about dog parks, right? There's just more information out there. So I have mm -hmm. no idea if they were way back when we went to vet school, right? <laughs> Uh, a long time ago, there was mm -hmm. absolutely dog parks over there, but I don't know if that's because there was a vet school there, or what the deal mm. was, I don't know. Yeah, we did not have dog parks, but we did have areas that were on un, uh, unregulated dog parks yeah. where I went to that's, school. I was, sounds, it was a small sounds like a so dog park to me. It was basically an area that, yeah, it was a big field, but yeah. there was... There you go. You would take all the dogs, so they would just right. have off-leash time, but they, yeah. it was a group that you had to get together with. Ah. So you didn't walk into a large group of dogs that you don't know, um, which, you know, has good and bad. Well, and there we get into the situation, right? So like for dog lovers out there that are listening, we're, we're going to kind of break down what, what the risks are and, and if, and how you might safely be able to, you know, uh, take advantage of the dog park down the street for your a uh, furry family member. Uh, but before we do that, we're going to take a short break. So on the other side of the break, we're going to talk about, is it safe to take your dog to the dog park? And if so, how do you do that? How do you do that? All right, hang on. We're coming back. It's Dr. Jen, the vet, and I'm here with my friend and colleague, Dr. Keith Latson. He's got an incredibly interesting story all about full bucket health. My college roommate and vet school housemate, Dr. Rob Franklin and I were collaborating on some cases. Both of us were struggling with diarrhea in some of our patients, whether it was after a procedure or after, after an illness. So we created a formulation, but we didn't want to just create a formulation. We also wanted to create a movement in animal health for being able to help animals in need through the use of our products that we develop. That really has resulted in our one-for-one -one giving program, which we're re really proud of, as much as we are our formulations for dogs, horses, and cats. And so if you wanna know more about their one-for-one -one giving at Full Bucket, or if you're interested in better supporting your dog, cat, or horse's digestive health, head over to fullbuckethealth.com to learn more. Hey, pack listeners. Your continuing education code for this episode is CC220009. Okay. And oh my gosh, there's a doggy park near me called Barks to Riches. <laughs> no. Okay, obviously we're back in the chat room. Dr. Jason had to get Barks to Riches out there. Funny. That is a funny, funny name. It is funny. Uh, okay. 
So, all right. So if I have a new puppy that I want to show off, cause it's also kind of social for the owners, right? Mm-hmm. Um, what, like, so can I take him to the dog park? Is that like, when is that appropriate or is it ever inappropriate? Because, you know, they start to dog up and they're not as cute by about like what, six months or something. <laughs> they start to right. dog up. So can, can I take them to the dog park before that? Gosh, I think of it. If you had five different specialty groups and they, you asked them, to five. so if you had a behaviorist and an orthopod and an internal medicine person oh, who's mainly, point. right, mainly right. interested in infectious disease in yeah. my world, then everybody's going to have a different answer. So with, and then of course the vaccine folks, the immunologists, but I think that the most important thing that I worry about is having them protected from the diseases that are going to circulate in the population that you are going to be involved in. So, um, and then that will vary, right? So it varies depending on how the mommy dog was vaccinated, right? So we don't know, a lot of these dogs are rescue dogs. We don't know what their moms were vaccinated for. So we don't know how their vaccination status is. We don't know what they were vaccinated for unless we test everybody at, you know, and a baby, every every little wee puppy doesn't need to be tested for every disease. Right. Um, So I would say, and this I often defer back to my regular vets, but definitely till they get a full set of vaccinations and the full set of vaccination is such a can of worms because (laughs) they're right. It's a really, and there are smarter people than me out there that are talking about this every single day and have put out a really fairly um, recent that full set of vaccination in 20. 14, I believe, and that world vaccinations changed a lot of um, change a lot of how we look at vaccinations. Maybe we do them earlier, maybe do them more often mm-hmm. because we don't know about the mom's maternal antibodies, which are going to in fact impact how the vaccinations will be, or the vaccines that you give the maternal antibodies, mom's antibodies are actually going to make them less effective. So right. we better, so right. So we better know, or we better vaccinate them more often. So I thought this is fascinating actually, because some of the smarter people are saying earlier, more often mm-hmm. and um, for a complete set. But then the flip side is you need to know that this is the other part of the big um, vaccine, vaccine can of worms, key, right? <laughs> the can of worms is that you need to know which vaccines are core and what, which vaccines are not. Oh, oh, uh, wait, 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 right? wait. I think right. did like, did we ban that phrase in the chat room already one well, time, Jason? Uh, oh, at, no le- at, at least once. I think we yeah. made shirts about it, right? I, okay. Yeah. We had shirts about like no so core. core. So let's say <laughs> most no, no. recommended. No, no. Now we got to talk about why. Okay. Right? Okay. Right. Okay. So <laughs> listeners, listen, listen. So yes. there's, there's this thing that um, some veterinarians will talk about called core vaccines. Mm-hmm. And so, and then there's non-core and core is used by some veterinarians to mean specific vaccinations that every uh, dog that's alive blanket. should have, yeah. right? Blanket like it's vaccine. just a blanket thing. Yeah. And then non-core is like what some veterinarians consider to be optional. Okay. But and not if- optional. Right. Is that what, they're not really optional. If you change, if your lifestyle is such that you need it. Right. And so, right. but for me, so th- this is the reason like I banned the term core oh, vaccines okay. in chat room is because every, every vaccine recommendation or every, um, uh, yeah, vaccine recommendation for each pet should be made based on that pet's individual risk, which is largely based on their lifestyle. And right. so Absolutely. if they're at risk for it, that's no longer non core for them. It's core mm-hmm. for them. Mm-hmm. And so I feel like that core core for who, um, because mm-hmm. you know, I, and so, so for me, I, because I feel like those vaccine determinations should be made b- with a risk assessment for every single pet. So there right. is so no do- core. I love Dr. it. Okay. Dr. So Jen, what do we call Dr. it? We call it bespoke. We call it bespoke Ooh. vaccine uh, Ooh. protocol. That's what Dr. J- Dr. Jen's bespoke <laughs> vaccine protocol. Come no, to so a clinic, should... 
and, and get a best. Oh, I like gosh. that word, right? It's a great word. So yes, okay. but I love it. customized vaccine for it, your dog, because even in the same area, different owners' lifestyles will dictate different vaccines. That are needed, correct. Right. And right. So, and, so and, I think that, yep. and the, the other thing is that, um, I, you know, I rail against, uh, paradigm, Right. I just I because we become complacent. And so for me, I rail because, against paradigm. Because, ah. Well, well, Dr. Dr. So Dr. Don, I mean, in our career, like alone, we've seen like multiple shifts in the understanding of infectious disease agents and how they're transmitted to our pets and to us. Mm -hmm. But the problem is like, it takes a while for people to embrace that people. I mean, veterinarians, because they don't, it's, it's hard to keep up with all the changes. And Absolutely. so once you learn something, you gotta, you know, you gotta unlearn it and then learn the new stuff. And so let's just avoid that, those, that complex stuff. And let's just say, Hey, guess what? Make a mm -hmm. risk assessment based on that dog's lifestyle. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. And that's exactly it because core and non-core are only in is just for our vaccine co and manufacturers right because everybody because it'll be easier if you bundle together some of the vaccines and you'll only have to go to the to the to your visit once and it's yep. one injection but you're right and that's the point is that for more, anybody that's going to the dog park with the risk that we have yeah a lot of the non-core is on your bespoke animal yes. <laughs> vaccine plan. Right. And I don't want anybody to think that they should not have a leptospirosis vaccine if you're going to a dog park that's coated in water. Thank so you. Thank you. Not, Boom, right there. Right? So that's not, that's core for every, every dog that has, well, access, and that's most dogs, and the lifestyle which is most of the dogs that are going to the dog park. Right. So just, uh, just for instance. Right. Just as a, for instance, <laughs> lepto, right. And yes. I, and I, but I feel like there's so many veterinarians and, and, um, you know, dog owners who are mm -hmm. afraid of lepto vaccination. Um, yes. And again, that's part of an old paradigm. Right. Talk about hard <laughs> to change, right. That's an excellent example oh, of hard yes. to change your mindset. Right. So it's, so. It's yeah, it's ridiculous. But but if you if you are data driven, which I know my friend Dr. Martin or Dr. Martin is. So yes. if you are data driven, then if dogs go to dog parks, right? There was that paper out of Arizona that said the risk factor in low prevalence areas was hanging out in dog parks. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, so you 100 percent should be vaccinating that dog for lepto on an annual yes. basis. Yes. Um, you know, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so let's agree to agree on that one. Yes. <laughs> we can use the bespoke terminology. Right. No, well, the, only, the only thing real, really wrong with an email. Word, yeah. Is the terminology, right? Because it, 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 put, it kind of pigeonholes everybody into thinking one thing. And it's not, I don't yes. think that many people, I think in, almost every veterinarian and every, every client that you have will understand if you just take the three minutes to explain, listen, you do this. So you need these. They don't, core is just easy to talk about. And I, but, but Dr. Jin doesn't like easy. She likes truthful. And, and so we'll go with the spoke. Uh, and and every, everything's going to be a little bit different for each, for each dog and dog, dog owner. So. Absolutely. But we well, were talking about going to dog parks as we got right. off into this vaccine situation. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. The initial question that we tangent, which I, you know, I might tangent. Um, so I think that you can definitely go to dog parks safely okay. if you have a dog that, uh, that has appropriate behavior, mm -hmm. right? Because not the, some, some dogs don't interact well with other dogs when that's sometimes because they have had bad experiences and they have not right. been socialized and it's right. not their fault. And you can do all the behavioral stuff in the world. And some dogs just don't in, interact in an appropriate way. They don't speak the language of other dogs. Kind of like and, people. Right. And so, so some people yes, are exactly. never going to be super socially competent, yeah. right? They can try really hard, but desire. It, right. But it makes them really uncomfortable and they would just prefer to be by themselves yes. most of the time. Um, and dogs are the same way. I don't know why we expect every dog to love every other dog. 
I mean, yeah. or every dog to love the dog park because some dogs that's just so much for them to mm-hmm. to interpret in their world too much. So mm-hmm. if they don't like it, they then they're not a good dog park candidate. But I think back to the basics, infectious mm-hmm. disease wise, we definitely have to make sure that our dogs are covered for especially like respiratory viruses because that whole respiratory virus like that thing is going to go through the dog park like no it's like heaven business. heaven right dog right? park is like heaven yes yeah. for for respiratory everything well so we have to make sure that our dogs are vaccinated because we can't vaccinate the world of dog parks great cor- correct well that and that's the other thing is that um it's a little bit like going to the beach right? Like as a mm-hmm. human, if you go to the beach, they can't disinfect the beach for you. So guess what? Put your towel down first. Okay. <laughs> don't, don't lay directly on the beach, but people don't like, so I, I like, if you get listeners, like listeners, if you get nothing out of this podcast, get this, um, you have to protect yourself and your dog when you go to the dog park. Cause dog park is not going to protect you <laughs> no no yeah and you shouldn't Easy. expect it to it's crazy right so, i love the word respiratory we should have gotten yeah i know i want I, yeah. just gonna say that one more time right Be he's great. canadian is that the, me sorry sometimes, sometimes you're canadian that's funny yes sometimes. respiratory yes. okay yes Right. So, um, so if we talk about respiratory or respiratory, um, infections and the Mm -hmm. dog, right. Cause I'll tell you from an infectious disease standpoint, when people ask me in general practice about like, Hey, can I take my dog to the dog park? I'm like, no, it's the cesspool of the world. (laughs) Don't take your dog. Right. (laughs) But that's not, I mean, Uh, you could take them there once. Right. That's right. (laughs) One time. Um, that's that's it. That's not really an appropriate approach because mm. it is mm. like, it is good for like the sociological things and you want to take the pet. And so I agree. They, they have to be protected. Right. An eight week old puppy mm-hmm. is not a good candidate, as you say, cause they're not finished with their quote puppy shots, the series. It's not one puppy shot. Mm-hmm. It's not two puppy shots. It's at least three sets of puppy shots, at least three. And what you're telling me now is it may be more, um, mm-hmm. but, uh, you know, a a couple of weeks after their last set of puppy shots. So like between 16 and and 16 and 18 weeks, Mm -hmm. um, they can go to the dog park and they should, because now I think, what do they say? Like, if you want them to be comfortable with stuff, you got to introduce it to their world before they're 20 weeks old. Um, so it's a tight, it's a tight window for socialization to protecting them. I know, and which is of course, everybody's sort of conundrum. And especially Mm -hmm. with doggy not doggy day, daycares dr jason but like um dog training right oh yeah we have a bunch of puppies right it's all puppies but that's a bit more controlled so it leans into the non-speaking of dr jason's rules that's a bit more of a controlled right environment, environment where you can disinfect a little bit right mm-hmm. in between so what's but, the what's the risk for respiratory virus? So if I go to the dog park because you mentioned lepto, you mentioned respiratory virus. Are, are you now can, are you now Canadian, Doctor? No, Jones? I just <laughs> you I just were just assimilated like in less than a minute. All right? I know. I just feel like it's fun to right. say. It's I sounds, know. It sounds so much fancier. Um, right. Okay. So what like what what are my risks? How can I you know besides vaccination? So and okay. So let's first talk about like how are you gonna prepare your dog before the dog park. So mm-hmm. you're going to get him vaccinated for lepto, mm-hmm. um, which is a bacterial okay. disease that they get from contaminated water, soil, dirt, other dogs and wildlife, basically anywhere they go. And mm-hmm. yes, you have lepto where you live. I don't care where you're listening. I mean, except Antarctica, but you're not in Antarctica listening to us. You have lepto <laughs> where you live. What about respiratory viruses? We can like, how, how we can, what, what are we going to vaccinate for? How are we going to do that? Well, there is, so there are some that you can vaccinate for and some that you cannot, right? So there is, there used to be the dogma of the respiratory complex was that there was just a few viruses and a bacteria. So there was Bordetella, um, right, which we all vaccinate for, what, uh, not all. It's a part of the bespoke vaccination program. Mm-hmm. So anybody, for, for social dogs, for social for dogs. For social dogs, which every, every dog is social. It's a because. Uh, 
I beg to differ. Because that's a dog to dog transmission. <laughs> You I can have beg a all you I, want. I have a dog who's not social. <laughs> okay, so maybe your dog does not that's, need to get yeah, vaccinated for like, Bortetella. Yeah, yeah, but no, she, but yeah. she yeah. lives, but she lives with other dogs. She do, I, do, I wasn't arguing Bortetella. I was just saying social, and she would she would cringe if someone told her, "Hey, you're a very social dog." Uh, but her not. housemates are, and they'll bring it back to her. Of course, absolutely. Mm-hmm. That's right. Exactly. So okay. you want to have your routine. Uh, can we call it routine? Okay. Base, basic. What are we going to call it? Our general puppy shots. Right. Uh, right. So, so we're going to get all of, we're going to get the adenovirus. Um, and then probably you're going to get parainfluenza in <gasps> there. If, yes. Right. Yes. You must have parainfluenza, otherwise known as the glue that holds together the canine infectious respiratory disease complex family. <laughs> also, because. <laughs> How excited you got! Pear influenza. That's right. <laughs> she did. She did get excited. And I've never heard it called that, but <laughs> ever. Like, did you that's the first that up, time. Doctor Jen. It's pretty yes. good. Very cute. Yes, but that's data. Good. But data tells me that. Right, because it will influence your immune system, so it makes you more at risk for all the other vaccines, uh, yes. other viruses. So. Yes. I mean, whatever way you want to vaccinate for parainfluenza, nasally, right? Not yeah. orally. I love up the nose. I know. If you I can do. get next to the dog, the up the nose is great because it's going to get all that local immunity. How exciting is that? You don't have to give another injection. I love it, right? Yeah. Um, not that I vaccinate anything, but you know. But you see the, I, but you I, see I the outcome of not vaccinating. I 100% see the dogs that go from a Blandenbore upper respiratory tract infection to the next thing you know, then they have pneumonia and then they have an actual pneumonia and then they're sick. So those are the guys that I see. And, you know, worst case scenario, especially in the little stuffy nose, cute dogs, like some of us have, (gasps) then those dogs might get worse pneumonia, right? Yeah. So they could be oxygen dependent. So I, yeah, I'm a big proponent of getting the parainfluenza glue i love that did you make that up for real yes for real so fancy yeah i I mean it's not respiratory but well you know what we all have to have our well you did call it the respiratory (laughs) complex glue so use it in the same sentence right Uh oh uh oh Mm -hmm. i'm paying attention two for one yeah she's (laughs) on the scoreboard Yep. That's right. No, no, no. Two more. <laughs> I love it. Okay. So we're, okay. So we're going to vaccinate for lepto. We're going to vaccinate for adenovirus. We're going to vaccinate yes. for parainfluenza, yes. bortetella. Uh, yep. And uh, okay. And then the other big gorilla in the dirt, right? Parvo. You should just vac- Parvo is ubiquitous yeah. also. So yeah. Yes. Everyone get vaccinated for Parvo. Um, yeah. Because that's silly. That's just silly. It is. It's just so, silly. It's just silly. It's just silly not to. Right. It's bad life choice. And then what about, um, we haven't mentioned distemper. Oh, probably good. Which scares probably me. Good. Yes. We, we are in the vaccine for distemper, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And we're going to do that. Yeah. Often, early, early, maybe often. <laughs> we're gonna Earlier do and more often, you said. So earlier yeah, or more maybe, often. Mm-hmm. Maybe more often. Yeah. Mm-hmm. which is interesting just to prevent it and so that i guess the more often idea is just to so that we don't see the breakthrough right, right? right. it's the it's more cautious it just right. means they have to be in there more um that in there at the vet so right. and then we haven't talked about flu uh-oh flu influenza vaccinations Ooh. yes so of course if you're at a dog park, no matter where you are, I I would strongly encourage you talking to your veterinarian about a flu vaccine. I don't know if I have to say anything else. Well, I mean, here, we I'll just add one. Good. Yeah, I'll just um, add uh, two little nuggets to that, right? Um, because like our listeners already know about my love for the influenza, but um <laughs> Influenza. If your if your dog is is vaccinated for Bordetella kennel cough, then your dog should also be vaccinated for influenza, because because the risk factor is the same. 
Same, same risk factor. It's like well, one of my favorite sayings. It is, right? Oh. Um, it is. So secondly, uh, how's about just go ahead and protect yourself too and talk to your medical provider about whether or not you can safely receive an influenza vaccination as well. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I'm not recommending that that would be illegal because I don't mm -hmm. practice on people in this country. Mm -hmm. um, but I would recommend talking to your provider because you're going to see other people. And you know what people do on days when they don't feel good enough to go to work because they're snarfly snuffly? Well, they make use of the day by taking their dog where? To the dog park. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that is so true. So true. Yes, it's true. It's true. So um, mm -hmm. while you're out there with all the other snarfly, snuffly folks, you want to make sure you have your influenza vaccination as well. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, I totally 100% agree with that. Um, <clears throat> and okay, so that is a lot of vaccination. Lots. Is it too much? Is it too much? Can a dog die from over vaccination? Can they die from over? Have you ever seen that? What do the symptoms look like for that? I, so dogs do get, I will qualify by saying that you can have side effects from vaccination. Naturally. I will also, yes. You, me, dogs, cats, probably raccoons. I don't know. Never done it, but I'm sure any species could have a, a vaccine reaction. Yeah. However, the risk benefit analysis would say that we're going to vaccinate for all these things. However, we're not yeah. going to vaccinate all these things all the time. You're going to go to your bespoke provider and that provider is going to say, let's do this one once every three years. Let's do this one once every year. And it's going to be on the basis of the vaccine characteristics and how long that vaccination is going to produce a new immunity. And right. that is well documented and yep. getting better documented, which I'm super excited about. So a lot of our vaccines are now good for longer. Yep. And most of the vaccines um, there are a lot of those vaccines that we talked about can be, can be every three years now. I mean, right. obviously the, the ones that are more bespoke are yearly, but there's nothing wrong with going and hanging out with your vet once a year. Oh, you I definitely mean, should go see your vet once a year. Right. It, lepto Most vaccine. Is, are, yeah. Lepto vaccine, the, um, respiratory bacteria <laughs> vaccines. <laughs> Um, the Bordetellas, yes. I keep, nose, I, I keep waiting for a mycoplasma vaccine, but mycoplasma is tricky. Um, yes. So yeah, but anyway, um, yeah. So, but but I guess I should be like more clear about my question, Jason. Do you understand what what I'm asking about? Like, I don't know. It was it was like uh, <clears throat> such a long right. time ago with the question. I have no idea what the question was now. <laughs> so ask it again. My, my question is because because <laughs> clients ask all the time. They say, well. Um, if I vaccinate him for, um, X, Y, and Z, X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. And now you want me to at add W. Time. Well, yeah. no, not even at the same time. Like, let's say you oh. break them up, right? Because yes. we do know it's, it's a risk factor for them being more lethargic, more sore, mm -hmm. et cetera. Just like if you get a whole bunch of vaccines on the same day, right? Mm -hmm. We do know that the, it's a risk factor. Um, but just vaccinating, even if you split them up for W, X, Y, and Z, rather than just mm -hmm. X, Y, and Z. Um, isn't that over vaccinating? Oh, I, okay. So I think I answered the question. So the, the question is, if you have, is more going to increase your risk for the side effects? Or is more, is, is there a point at which more becomes too much? And, and the answer is no. There's no right. threshold for number of vaccinations because every vaccine triggers a different response, uh -huh. different cells make different antibodies, whichever, however it does, everything does a different job. Right. So we do, no. we do not worry about that in humans. We don't say, no. oh no, you've already reached your limit, lifetime limit right. of vaccines. You're you done. Get. That's it. Yeah. Never right. heard that before. Right. Yeah. But, but people do that all the time with pets and they'll say, well, I really um, love taking my dog to the groomer, um, but you're saying I have to vaccinate them for flu, but they already get all these other vaccines. I'm worried about over vaccinating. And I like, uh, I'm like, and what does yes. that look like? Can you show right. me the paper where a dog died? 
adverse reactions are different. That's different. Mm -hmm. It's not the same thing. People where a dog right. died from over vaccination. No, you can't. Cause it doesn't exist. There's no inherent right. risk, um, beyond side effects, which we can mitigate. Right. Yes. So come Absolutely. on. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. And I guess I don't hear that. So that's, I think a general practitioner who hears that every day or maybe once a month. Yeah. 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 Unfortunately, thankfully I don't usually have people who say that, but I do yeah. also say that I do have people who want to do um, less vaccination, which mm -hmm. everybody wants to do less vaccination. Well, yeah. Veterinarians, the people who make the vaccine protocols, everyone wants less vaccination yep. if it is safe to do so. Right. The, the end. And it is, if it's safe and documented that the immunization is going to be appropriate for X amount of time, then don't yep. vaccinate your dog extra. But also don't under vaccinate. I would definitely right. take my chances with the over than the under on that one. Cause I see a lot of dogs with lepto. Oh yeah. Nice. more. Yeah. I mean, in, in peaks, yeah. in peaks, right. Right. And when right, I right. see them that sick, I, my dog's vaccinated for lepto. I'll oh, Cosette, that. the farm fresh Frenchie. She was vaccinated when she was eight weeks old for lepto. Yes. <laughs> yes. Because done. Yeah, because I have provided care for a $25,000 Husky and Ooh, he was a $25,000 yes. Husky because he had to go on dialysis because when he was like less than a year, when he was less than mm -hmm. a year old, he was not vaccinated for lepto and he got lepto. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's awful. Yeah. And I'm it like, so awful. unless you want to pay for a $25,000 Husky, <laughs> mm -hmm. pay for the $25 vaccine, vaccinate your dog for lepto. Mm -hmm. um, especially if you're going to go to a dog park. Okay. So, so that's kind of, or, our next or, bit. or really anywhere there's other dog. We keep saying dog park because that, that's what we're talking about, but really anywhere there's going to be other dogs of unknown, you know, vaccine situation, right? Just, just yes. talk to your vet, get the dogs protected. Mm -hmm. It's a simple, it's a simple and smart and smart thing to do. So, mm -hmm. okay. So that's the kind of the, um, immunology approach, right? Like we can first, before we go to the dog park, we're going to do that. So now we're at the dog park. Mm -hmm. Okay. So behavior aside, everyone yes. listening in the chat room, behavior is a set. We're setting that aside. We're presuming everyone is angels. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> what are the steps we can take to make sure that our dog has the lowest chance of bringing home a new pathogen friend mm -hmm. and infection from the dog park while we're there? Routine. <sighs> That's a good question. And I think that, uh, that perhaps it's very basic things, but I okay. think basic things go a long way. So if you see a dog that has obvious snorkies who coming out who of its shouldn't nose. shouldn't be there, right? In the first place. Who you shouldn't be there, shouldn't but be not there. everybody says nope. my dog has, right. has had hair influenza and I'm going right. to be taking the dog out of the dog park, right. park for four weeks. Not right. everybody does that, right? They don't. So, uh, yeah, not, not everybody does. Most of us do. So you avoid those dogs. I mean, as if they have things hanging out the of The plague. Nose. Yeah. Because they do. <laughs> and they... <laughs> They do have glue. That's right. <laughs> nose glue, nose goo. Right. Yeah. Which could be glue. Right. And um, so you do that. You avoid any place where there's standing water. You try to not. No have puddles. Drinking. No puddles. Uh, no drinking puddles, ideally. Right. Okay. Standing water, kind of gross, kind of mm -hmm. gross. And uh, then obviously, you know, obvious things are watching your dog at all times that they're not doing something silly like eating feces because they sometimes do they that. do they gotta taste everybody's poop they, yep mm -hmm. they do nasty um, that yeah it's a bit nasty but and they're going to keep their no they're they're going to sniff each other right so there are some things that we haven't talked about that are not respiratory that are also going to be passed around the dog park but i don't know that that's within the scope of our like our talk today but um, it's totally fine are you talking about yeah. gi parasites uh, well gi parasites um uh, some like the doggy mersa right oh. is passed around dog parks right yes. 
some methicillin resistant staff um, food staff staff food intermediates. So intermediates is going to be hanging out in the butt as that's where it hangs out and the nose there's no that yeah mm-hmm. there's there's no forsaking that that's so the fecal of, nasal route the less yeah. lesser known <laughs> <laughs> that's where it hangs that's where it hangs out so yes. sadly they're going to pass that around and hopefully you never have to deal with that but there are lots of things that, that they're going to going to have exposure to but then you also just want to keep their exposure down yeah so i don't know do you have any other big well there was there was a survey um and don't worry folks we'll put links to um these papers um but so uh, a great colleague of ours um dr susan little at oklahoma state oh, yeah. Um, yeah. yes, she did a wonderful, she, she is good times. She's a great person and she loves dogs. Um, <laughs> and so she, um, worked with a team to do a survey of dog parks and parasites. Cause she's a parasitologist mm-hmm. and she discovered that, Hey, guess what? There's a whole lot of parasites hanging around where dogs congregate and poop. I mean, <laughs> what happens. It doesn't really matter how much you pick it up. It's still there. Um, yeah. So, uh, having your dog on routine prevention, um, you know, the monthly preventatives, I think is very, um, wise as well and getting mm-hmm. that annual fecal exam done at your veterinarian as well. Um, mm-hmm. but then also we didn't even mention this. If like, if you're at the dog park and you see a dog, I mean, or maybe a person too, Jason, if you see a ratty looking dog, um, are you going to like, want to run up and pet that dog? Usually it's my first option is to run up and pet <laughs> and scratch and sniff. That's usually what, what scratch I and sniff. No, no. Yeah, of, co- of course not. That's not what you, what you want to do. I think, I think all this boils down to is a little bit of common sense, um, mm-hmm. stuff, but it's worth mentioning all these things that are so called common sense. Cause we all know it's not super mm-hmm. common, common, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, so I think the, um, ectoparasites, right? Like fleas and ticks. So mm-hmm. you, you got to have them on good prevention. If you're going to take them to the dog park, cause most dog parts in my experience, they have, gotta be there. Yeah. yeah they're oh, there. Yes. Yeah. You can't, but, you can't, you know, there's woods and stuff. Right. Um, mm-hmm. you know, like the no leash park that I used to take Daisy best dog ever. I used to take Daisy to, um, I would never see another dog, but there's, there was lots of woods. And so mm-hmm. she would be off the leash and running around like a fool uh i mean there's ticks there's ticks in the yes yeah so i think that's appropriate um to mention as well um and if you ask your veterinarian if your if your product covers ticks because some of them don't right right and i think it's easy enough to say you usually only need flea prevention but if you are a dog park aficionado then you probably do need a tick prevented. Yeah. Yeah. And so do you see tick-borne disease often in your practice, doctor? I see some, I see, I definitively see some, I probably see some more than, than most. Um, I see some really sick dogs and some that have positives that have come from elsewhere Yeah. that have just a positive status, uh-huh. which of course is, oh. is I had, I had, I saw it, I cleared it, you know, from the Northeast where everybody has seen Lyme or Ehrlichia. Mm -hmm. And then I do see some dogs that are sick with Lyme or Ehrlichia and I have an active case of Ehrlichiosis right now. And their prevention people, prevention is much easier than seeing me an awful lot and being on antibiotics for a month and then another antibiotic for a month. And yeah. You know, so it is, it harkens back to, it would be good if I was out of business with respect to tick-borne disease. Right? Yeah. So would you recommend Lyme vaccination for dogs who are going to be frequenting dog parks? That is a, so that's a very good question. So the question is, or the answer is 
it's part of the dis- bespoke in our area oh. still yeah. right we don't see a lot of Lyme positivity but there is some yeah um and she's so, we're in florida folks we're in florida oh yes yeah, sorry yeah, we're every where everything so grows if, well <laughs> yes lots of greenery so everything is going to come if it's not here already so mm-hmm. i would say um it's one that i don't I don't recommend routinely, mm-hmm. but the we have also have a lot of snowbirds. So we have a lot of dogs that are back and forth from the northeast right. to here. And those dogs are often vaccinated for Lyme because those yeah. dogs are going into the heart of it. Yeah. And we know that there is no matter how good their tick prevention is, there it's just everywhere. So right. it's overwhelming um, exposure. So those dogs have the highest risks. And I, then I think is reasonable to consider it. So yeah. it's a, that was a very internal medicine answer. So it's long. It was. It doesn't really, you know, it's like. I'm just going to hang a sign on my dog that says, if you're from the, if you're north of the Mason Dixon line, I don't want to talk to you. And my dog would just, <laughs> it's just going to, you know, like we had this six foot area, just stay away yes. from me. I don't want to talk yeah. to you. I don't want anything jumping from you to me. I just don't want any of that stuff. Right. So right. Yeah. that's how you I'm going to fix home. that. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god. If you're gosh. bringing ticks, don't come by. That's right. right. If you're bringing yeah. ticks, don't come by. That's right. right. That's right. right. Well, um I do think it's encouraging though that with the amount of preventive uh medicine, I guess, preventive care that's available to dogs mm-hmm. these days, they can safely visit the dog park. Behavior set aside, don't crush us mm-hmm. on the internet, but behavior set aside, but from an infectious disease standpoint, I think they can. Um mm-hmm. And then I know I interrupted you. You were going to talk about um, water bowls earlier. Oh, I mean, obviously sitting water is still, even if it's a, in a water bowl, it's still standing. It's sitting there, oh. pour it out, you know, get some fresh water if you can. I like right? how you did that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> point I, you know, I guess people don't think about that. When you see a community water bowl, you don't have to actually yes. wait till it's empty to to right. rinse it out and refill it, right? Yes. Yeah. It's never going to be sanitized. Let's be real. Unless somebody's super keen and is bringing in, no, nobody's going to bring in a disinfectant to the walk. Well, I mean, some people probably might, you know, I might sometime, who knows? <laughs> I'm just kidding. So if you, if you I, see Dr. Martin lurking around your dog park with her giant dog. <laughs> She may have disinfectant with her. <laughs> yeah, that definitely have hang out with her and her dog because you yeah. know that dog's protected and the water bowl is squeaky clean. Sanitized. Yeah. That's right. The dog in the bubble. Yeah, like right. Like roll, rolling that's around funny. the dog park. That's the internist dog, the one in the hamster ball. Yeah. <laughs> She's getting great exercise. That's yeah. right. No, I'm not that. I'm not quite that neurotic, but pretty close. Oh, gosh. Too funny. Um... Yeah. We don't really even have to say about rabies, right? No, we really God, to, no. Okay. We don't we really should, have to say. We, sh- we should say it, even though we shouldn't have to say right. it. Right. It is common don't, sense. Yeah. Don't skip Just the rabies. It's shot. legally yeah. common sense, right? It's, <laughs> you have to have it. You have to have it. We don't want anybody to have rabies. We definitely don't want dogs running around that are at risk because it's in our wildlife population. So... One second it is still rabies. a thing. It is still a thing. It's still a thing. It's yeah. shockingly still a thing. And then, you know, the one, what there's a one health, um, right. So right. Our, <laughs> Dr. Chen loves one health that bad. Right. And so the whole idea of, uh, with rabies is that I thought, I find this fascinating. I'm sorry. Now I'm like into my fascinating. So I, I think it's fascinating that, uh, that with a worldwide program, we want to have canine rabies out of the population eradicated by 2030 slightly 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 put on under wraps or taken a step back because of the pandemic but still i thought i think that's just remarkable that there are people yep. out there as i like to say smarter and wiser than me that are doing that work every single day right a, well so um and our friend and friend of the show dr luke gamble is the founder of mission rabies um, who are one of the major players in that eradicate rabies or erase rabies global movement. Um, and so, yeah, 
So, I mean, it is a thing, even in the U S people do get rabies, Mm -hmm. um, dogs die of rabies. Uh, Mm -hmm. there is no cure for rabies. I mean, there was like seven people or so who lived through it and ruined the statistic, but living through it doesn't, how dare they, that you're, (laughs) but it doesn't mean that you're thriving. Like just because you survive in a medical human medical journal doesn't mean you're back to normal. Yeah. You don't want it. Like it's no. not a risk worth t- taking. Right. So, so get your dog vaccinated for rabies. We shouldn't have to say it, but we should also <laughs> always say it. Right. So. Not forget about it. Right. right. And don't skip it again over vaccination. Not really a, a thing. So don't skip it. Um, mm-hmm. You know, get your dog vaccinated. Uh, also cheapest vaccine, I think on the market now, most effective, yada, 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 get vaccinated for rabies. Okay. <laughs> So, yeah. Okay. So those are our two soapboxes, Jason. What's yours? You got one? I, uh, I don't have one. Uh, I do have a question about dog parks though, right? General question. After all of this, mm. all of this discussion, some might be terrified to go back to the dog parks. Mm. Is this a valid response or not? Ooh. I don't know. Like, I don't know. Uh, I, I, I would think say- you can take the tools that you have. Right. And you can have a more cautious. I think that it should make people ponder and be cautious, but not terrified. Have I, a healthy fear. Right. I, I would agree. Just know what you're getting into, right? And, and and some people probably think, oh, there's a bunch of dogs. They're more concerned about fighting and all this other kinds mm. of good. And while those are our behavior concerns, uh, the infectious disease part sometimes, maybe not as much now uh, as it, maybe 2016, but now they're Thanks, more into COVID. it. But maybe, yeah, that people are just more aware of this kind of yes. stuff, but it absolutely is a thing. And be aware, talk to your vet. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're going to put doc- Dr. Martin's phone number on the body, <laughs> call her directly and ask her any question you want 24 um, 7. She doesn't sleep. No, no, vacation. no, I'm just kidding. She's an um, internist. She has a lot right. of energy. <laughs> right, right. No, no, no. I think, well, I think this has been a very, a very balanced, like a very um, uh, common sense discussion of, is it safe to go to the dog park and how can we make it safe? Um, so, you know, so that our dogs can go. Um, right. It's like driving in a car, right? Of course it's not safe, right? Mm-hmm. You're getting in a car going 60 miles an hour. Okay. But you make it as safe as you possibly can. And you're going to be okay for the most part. Right. There you go. Oh, I like that. It's an inherently unsafe practice that we do every day, every day. Right. Yeah. That we make safer. Right. I like it we're, too. That's for us to live by. Very nice. Dr. Jason. Very well, nice. I don't say end. much. I don't say much, but when I do, it's very epic. I mean, I'm just thinking, who is this guy today? Mm-hmm. That he came out with rules and then he's popping off with like this philosophical like approach mm-hmm. to the dog park. Words to live by? Yeah, I know. I'm telling you. Who's Listen, this guy? Uh, a wise man once said, I stay ready so I don't have to get ready. Get ready. So. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. It's true. Yeah. Okay, uh, on that note, we're going to say thank you very much, Dr. Don Martin from Clearwater Animal Care and Referral, refer Animal Referral and Emergency Service. It's CARE because they care (laughs) down in Clearwater, Florida. So if you're in that area, uh, you definitely have a pillar of your um, (laughs) your intellectual community you can (laughs) lean on. And if you need if you need expert care and specialty care for your pet, you should pop over and see Dr. Martin at Care. Thank you. Um, yep. Thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Martin. Yep. And if you're from Clearwater, put the towel down first when you go to the beach. Yes. If you're if you're so close, you might as well pop to the beach. <laughs> That's right. right. Bring your blanket. Yeah. Lay it down. Yeah. Dr. Yes. Jim. You could you could play yes. a little beach blanket bingo. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Anyhow. <laughs> We're getting out of here. We're, we're closing the chat room now. Yeah, we're all going to the beach because we're all protected and vaccinated. We all have towels. It's safe. That's right. All right. Cosette, get, get your sun goggles, okay? Anyway, uh, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, that's all we have for you today. I'm Dr. Jen the Vet. And I'm Dr. Jason. And we'll see you next time. This episode is brought to you by... Full Bucket Veterinary Strength Supplements, the leader in digestive health for dogs, cats, and horses.